for uh, taking my president of revenue operations. It's been a big part of this from the very start. Great come on, guys, please. Chef Steve Jason, um, obviously a very big part of this as well. We're going to ask these gentlemen to just speak for a moment or two about the food and their journey, uh, and I'll make a question or two. Thank you. So, Richard Chef, please just give us a couple seconds. Well, I'll jump in first. First of all, welcome. And we have some exciting things going on today. This is a really fun one. We're going to tell you about it, you're going to be able to enjoy as well. But just to tell you at the top, we are driven by authenticity. We do our research, <coughs> we learn the fiction, we make sure it fits. And just to give you an idea, this is one of my set of books. You see all the tabs, you see all the markings, that's everything that was potential beverage, everything that was Product, everything that was a potential lecture, you name it. It's all like this all the way throughout all the seven books. So we sat down and talked about what are we going to serve? And we opened up the original three rooms there. What are we going to serve? And we're opening up the meeting all the And it is as authentic as it can possibly be. And we do a combination of what we have in books as well as in movies. Uh, for example, today we'll be showing you four different drinks that all came out of the movie The Prisoner of Action. And they were actual props that were on the back wall in the leaky column itself. And that's what drives us. That what inspires us. And in addition to that, the food is great. I'll let you make that determination, but we really are very prideful of our, of our food. And not just the food, but the ice cream. So if you'll get a chance to taste it, you have at this point in time. And drinks, as I mentioned. Uh, that's what drives us, of course. That's what makes this place so special. Yeah. All right, good morning. How's everybody doing? Good? Uh, so, just to uh, uh, take it a little farther from what Rick said, you know, uh, obviously uh, preparing to do something like this, or even if we go back four years ago when we started with the original Wizard of the Harry Potter, a lot of thought, a lot of uh, re research went into everything we did to develop and all the different recipes that we're serving from the butter beer right on through to the bangers and mash and everything along the way. Here at Leaky Cauldron, we created eight new dishes here that we, own, that we only feature here and a bunch of great new exciting drinks that we have right here on the table also. And the only thing that we're repeating between the two lands is the fish and chips, which we must because it is such a staple and such a great item uh, which we have right here. Everything up here has been glazed a little bit so it's a little bit more photogenic, uh, but we're going to give you a taste of all of these things. Very, very shortly, I think you'll really enjoy what you're going to taste. But all of the things that we worked on, we really tried, really, really, truly tried to make sure that we were using the proper salt, the proper ingredients, and the cheeses on our clowns, flour, all imported from Great Britain. The bangers are a recipe created by, you know, a recipe that you expect to find right in Great Britain. Everything down the line, we took that, that little bit of time and patience, sourced out the proper ingredients, and put together uh, a good combination of flavors on each plate to give you a good, authentic meal, and all of our guests will be able to enjoy and feel like they've been immersed in the whole world of what this is. Thank you, Chef. We have time for a question or two before the important thing happens. Do um, you guys have anything about to ask? It's still right there. Sure. The uh, green fishy ale, fish green ale. The fishy green ale. Yes. <laughs> is that going to be the signature drink? And can you describe some of the ingredients, including is there product tea and chocolate in the Okay. A little comment on what it is. It's, it, if you taste it, you'll get a, a nice refreshing flavor of some mint in it. Okay? And the fish eggs in it are full of a wonderful blueberry uh, flavored type of uh, liquid. So as you drink them, they pop in your mouth and the, the, the acidity of the blueberry fluid inside of them kind of goes along with the sweetness of the overall drink to give you a kind of a well-balanced, refreshing drink. Uh, obviously, fish and green ale, you know, coming right out of the fiction, we wanted to make it green, we wanted to make it kind of that fishy look with the eggs in it. I think we came up with something really, really cool. Thank you, Chef. Other questions? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. 
favorite meal? What's my favorite meal? What's my favorite meal? You know, looking at so, all over, I mean, they're all great in their way. I think the plowman's plow is, is, to me, is very representative of what Leaky Cauldron is. Leaky Cauldron is meant to be kind of a pub. So if you come in here for lunch or, or an early evening meal, you know, you get the plowman's plow. It has, you know, nine or ten different uh, ingredients on it, components, I should say, on it. So you get a little bit of everything, a lot of different kinds of flavors. It has scotch eggs, which, you know, definitely represent that part of the world very well. Branson pickle relish, a nice meat salad, three great English cheeses, some nice peasant bread, and some roasted tomatoes, all kind of enjoy it all together. I think that's a great dish. Another great dish, I think, on the table, the pies. And, you know, the fact that we better, the fishing of pie is wonderful, you know. Uh, we have we have the cottage pie, which is all beef over in over in the wizard world. We have a shepherd pie, which has a little bit of lamb notes in the back of it. Uh, here we did a combination of the cottage and the fish and the pie, so you get to try a little bit of the best of, best of both. And and we, you know we like to include a lot of salads. If you look on the table, there's vegetables and salads, and that's very important to us because we want to give you a very well balanced meal. And and, and uh, you know we, we think about our children, so we've got some. Uh, light meals here, and they're very low in calories, uh, just to, to, to be sensitive to that. And again, we also also add a couple of really cool desserts. My favorite is, is our chocolate pot and cream. And, you know, we're in a close setting to a nice warm, uh, this one here, a nice warm chocolate uh, excuse me, coffee pudding. And creme de here, which is kind of a Spanish version of a trifle, with a little bit of oats in it, and a little, there's a, a little, uh, after, uh, Seen it, but all the liquor's been cooked out, so it's good for everybody. <coughs> you know, a lot of fun, a really a lot of neat, fun things. Bang to the actual killer. So, I think you turn around and we show. We're going to put you on the spot today. So you your favorite dish, please. Chug in the hole. Have you ever heard of that before? It's a great dish. It's fun to eat. It's very, very delicious. You put a little gravy on it if you want. You know, it's a couple of uh, so small sausages you put inside the orange. And I hadn't really had it very much, you know, prior to this. And what Chef and his culinary team pulled together, it's just a fun. If I want to feel good, I come in and I have a fiber, and I have a tongue ball. And I'm happy. Thank you. Join me, Frank. Come over there, please. Uh, I want to know about Belmont butter beer ice cream, and was it not frozen beer, or what's the story there? Uh, well, the story there is, as we were, as we were developing more and more issues, we were trying to figure out different kinds of flavors and different kinds of interesting things that we could do. And we had been so successful with the regular butter beer and the frozen butter beer, we thought we'd give it a try and see if we could create an ice cream and then butter beer flavor to it. Knowing it would be a different consistency, and knowing that it would be you know, ice cream as opposed to a drink itself, we worked very hard on it. It's basically the same ingredients, just put together a little bit differently to make ice cream out of it. So it became a natural outgrowth of, can we do something like that? So we can keep talking and asking questions for another four. We can eat, but we'll take one more question. <laughs> Take care. <clears throat> Recently we found that my 12 year old daughter is uh, gluten intolerant, so that's something we're going to have to do here. We can yourself now and take her to any parks and so then there's something that she'll have to do. Will you be offering something of that nature? Because obviously she's not the only one that has to deal with it, but it's something personal. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, overall at Universal World, I know we've, uh, you know, we, we try to address uh, allergy issues. We try to take a look at offering alternative cuisine that would be more on the lighter side, and salads, vegetables, things like that. Um, uh, we even have culture meals on request. If they go to guest services, let us know in advance. We can, we can have that available. Uh, gluten sensitivity is becoming more and more and more mainstream in America and we're looking at that overall throughout our parks and try to offer offerings throughout the park. Uh, you know, if you go out to our new restaurant in City Hall called Vivo, we already have gluten-free pasta in there. Or we're developing gluten-free dough to make uh, pizzas in our red oven, which is to come soon. In the Wizarding World, you know, this type of cuisine is not uh, 
friendly to being non gluten with the different components of it, but you know, we certainly can create something with what we have. If someone was to say to us, we're gluten free, can we get, we have a gluten free allergy, can we, can we do something for us? And we, we certainly can put together a modified uh, plowman's platter that probably would, would meet those needs or something like that, yes. You know, of course, um, you know, the, uh, the, like for example, the cottage pies, topped with mashed potatoes, it's a savory beet and we're making sure not to put anything into that part of it so that it would be non gluten so, so it would be gluten-free. So we're, we're trying to deal with that and address that wherever we can as we continue forward to all of them, but all of them are Thank you. So, um, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Chef. Really you well, um, what we'd like to do is we're going to need a few moments to reset the house. So, um, I'm sorry for the different escape. Come back out to the doors and go back.